Listeners be advised, the Holiloquy podcast discuss matters related to the human experience and many that are sexual in nature. Due to this, some conversations may surround triggering topics such as sexual violence, self-harm, abuse, and much more. Please be advised, a list of crisis and psychological resources will be available in the show notes of this episode. With that said, let's get started with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please as we go through the following safety instructions. In the event that there is a loss of cabin pressure, oxygen mask will drop from the overhead. Place the mask over your nose and mouth. Breathe normally as oxygen is flowing even if the mask is not exposed. Be sure to adjust your own mask before helping others. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Holiloquy Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. This is your favorite host, Vernon T. Scott, also known as Slater Jackson, and for you freaky motherfuckers out there, Sebastian Adams. On today's episode, we're doing a little bit of swapping. We're doing a little bit of switching transitions. I don't know exactly how this episode is going to go, but we are talking about gender. So who knows what's going to happen within this conversation? Well, we do but y'all don't. Anyways, joining me today, I have the beautiful Devannon. How are you doing today? I'm marvelous, darling. How are you? I'm fantastic. I just know um, by one o'clock, I am going to be knocked the fuck out. Oh my God. I'm, I kind of want some wine tonight, but I don't have wine in my refrigerator. I got my oh. wine. I got my whiskey. The oh, song they sing in the South. <laughs> I just need, ooh, Tennessee whiskey. That's a good song. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's, Tennessee whiskey. That that song right there. Oh my fuck. Oh, I remember the first time I heard that song. I was like, I I don't know why, but this just touched my soul. Like usually I don't be listening to country music like that, but this was. I was like, mm, you said some words in this song. It, either it's because I'm an alcoholic right now. I know that you're singing about a woman, but I it might be a lot of things, but I felt this in the heart. Like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yes. The heart the fort got touched. Hallelujah. Real touch, real touch. Now, the man, this is, is we're now in season two of the Holiloquy podcast. And um, for those people who do not know who the man is, he's the host of the Sex, Drugs, in Jesus podcast. I need y'all to be like on that. Go listen to his podcast, listen to his show. Why haven't you caught up on these damn episodes? You should already know who the man is. But Devanna, do you mind reintroducing yourself to everybody so they know what you do, what you're about, a little bit about your show and all that before we get, you know, hot and heavy into the subject? Hey, motherfuckers, my name is Devanna, and I'm a power bottom person for most. Dick, 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 dick. Hallelujah, Tabernacle Jesus. Aside from that, um, I host, like, 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 like my, like my boy here said, the sex, drugs, and Jesus. I like the way you did that lift you, you've been listening i listen uh, to you pod <laughs> <laughs> podcast and um i'm an author i'm a blogger and um you know the, the retail and all those things so i just like to communicate with the world in all kinds of ways and we love it and you know so i'm not much of a, a religious person uh and i i appreciate the van because he can give me some words from the religion that i used to be in and i'm like okay i could connect with that because i feel it because the man is uh he's brilliant y'all he's like if you have listen listen to his podcast if you have not i actually just recently listened to the one where um you invited the guy on from who does the uh, I don't want to say wrap up Bible study, but like essentially, um, what's the name of that website where Over, um, overview Bible? Overview, overview Bible, Bible. Yes, yes. I was listening to that. I was like, oh, I'm getting a word today. I, I'm, I'm loving this. I probably need to like go over to this website and read some of this stuff. I might be able to connect to that childhood Christian um, that died off some time ago, like, like two years ago. Uh, well, his name his, his name is Jeffrey Kranz, and the whole thing about Jeffrey is that he is a 
he takes a non-Christian approach to the Bible. Mm -hmm. So none of what he does is about promoting Christianity. It's just promoting information. That is true. That is very true. So for yourself, uh, because I know you've, uh, I know like my history with just Christianity in general um, just made me move away from the church. And I know you had some experiences in yourself that you were placed outside of the church by those people who are leading. How, because I'm sorry, y'all, we're not getting in this topic yet, but we will be getting there soon. But how did that impact you, your faith? And um, like, what did you learn from that experience? And also feel free to rant about them too, the um, the ones who pushed you out. What was that church? Um, the, um, the Lakewood Church them, them people. <laughs> John, is it John Osteen or Joel Osteen? I think John Osteen was his pappy. Uh, Joel Osteen is the current one. And I think they named Joel's son John, too. So you technically have it right both ways. Oh. <laughs> well, yes, I mean, how was that? It was, it was cute till it wasn't. Mm. <laughs> It was like a bad breakup. You know, when I think about it, I think about that song by the, I believe it was the script called Break Even. Uh, oh, that's um, and, um, and, you know, and in this song, he's talking about, you know, when a heart breaks, it don't break even. So what had happened was, you know, I was twirling around Lakewood volunteering as I do because I'm huge on volunteerism and humanitarianism. I got out of the military, moved to Houston, Texas from California pretty much to go to Lakewood Church. That was one of my major reasons. Was there for a couple of years volunteering, applied to get on staff. They pulled up my social media, my space page at the time, because social media was very new, (laughs) you know. Yes, possibly. Right, found out that I wasn't straight, brought me into the office and fired me from all of my volunteering. You know, the adult choir, the kids choir, teaching kids, volunteer supervisor, everything not because of what i did not because i didn't show up to to volunteer on time not because i came up there twirling rainbow flags around but because my out you know my nature was you know who i am was now i guess revealed as though they couldn't tell it and now that was a threat to them so i learned from this that in these churches you're useful to them until you're not Mm. and when they come in there talking about we can't make it without you You're the best thing, you know, here in Houston, you know, this church is you and you're the church. No, bitch. They mean until you're no longer useful. (laughs) They mean the totality of people, not you individually. (laughs) See, and the the crazy thing is most definitely not not to say all churches. So if anybody thinks that's what I'm saying, it's not. But like in most definitely when it comes to like event uh, and evangelical Christian churches and the way that they operate in terms of um, demonizing so many people, meaning groups, most definitely when it comes to LGBTQ people. And then the word groomer and pedophile that's always been thrown around within these spaces. And I'm just like, but when you look at your church, your deacon is over here hitting on a 13 year old. Like, are you not going to say anything about that or not? Like you're not protecting these young ladies and young men who come to you to uh, express these uh, traumatic experiences that they've gone through with members of your church and you're not trying to eradicate or fix that issue at all. It's just so much. Like, I think that's one of the things that uh, really tore me away uh, and I think it's, uh, I see that, you know, different aspects of society too, outside of the church, but it's just those who have the the platform um, and speak on these issues the most usually are those that's within the church. Uh, most definitely when it comes to um, demonizing LGBTQ uh, plus people, and they be the same one oh, sucking dick behind the pew. So I'm just saying. That Jerry Falwell documentary uh, with his pool boy spilling the tea on how him and his wife was fucking the pool boy, you know, it's out on Hulu now. Brian Houston from Hillsong Church in Australia is on trial right now because in that church is the largest, one of the largest churches in the world next to Lakewood. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Because his daddy was molesting boys and they knew and they didn't say anything. And all these people preach against homosexuality. And the, and it all they shit all they draws is out there, honey. There's shows called um. There's another thing called a uh, American Gospel, you know, that talks about you know the you know the fake healers and stuff like that. You know, yeah, 
You're right. And when I was there, I wasn't the only queer. I mean, there was plenty of people twisting around there, honey. <laughs> it was just that. It was just that. Because if you have people, you're going to have all, all variety. There is no church in the world that only has straight people. Yeah. That's just dumb if you think that. And so they just singled me out because parents were complaining about my style, my boots. You would think no one would claim about you wearing fucking boots in Texas, but they do in Houston. You know, that's how they dress in Los Angeles. <laughs> I learned that in California. You get the cowboy boots because they're cheaper than the kind of clothes at the mall. When you put the goddamn jeans over them, can't nobody tell the fucking difference. And the shit looks good regardless if you're trying to get a Kenneth Cole look or not. So I just did what I did in California. It wasn't a gay look. It was just smart fashion. Mm -hmm. And so the, the parents started complaining about me, not thanking me for volunteering around their badass children, but just complaining about my style. The staff at Lakewood called me into the office and started asking me if I had a girlfriend and all of this shit, getting into my personal life. And churches feel like they can do that. Control who you date, who you fuck. No, they tell you not to fuck at all. Mm. You know, where you dress, where you go. They all in your damn business. And I'm just a volunteer. And my dumb ass didn't have enough sense to read the signs and the tea leaves and leave then. I compromised. I was like, I rationalized. I was like, okay, I'm going to overlook this. This is bullshit. I'm just going to stay here and take this abuse because I want to do the work of Jesus. Fuck them in the ass with no lose. <laughs> but like, I, I, that, that, <laughs> other than <laughs> fucking, oh my God, that's rough. Jesus, I don't know how people <laughs> even do that for real in their lives. Don't do that, people. I always use lube. Spit is not lube. I'm going to say it till spit is never lube. Anyways, um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when you said just rationalizing, it, it just took me to a place when I've, thought about um some of the jobs i will work I, I worked at where people continue to add more and more onto my plate because they knew that i would get it done and i'm just like you know it's going to get me to somewhere better it's going to make sure that my name is going to be this place that place they're going to know so much about me they're going to want me to extend to a higher position they see my worth they know my value they know i can do these things and then after all the fruits of your labor, they're just like, oh, so I'm sorry, you don't have the metrics or you don't uh, meet these qualifications or, you know, we think we have somebody else that's better for the job. Actually, my favorite one, you know what, you are doing such a great job uh, in your current position that we are afraid to move you from to do something else. The fuck you mean? You you added all this shit to my job anyways that I'm not supposed to be doing. Let me get something else. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sorry. I, that, that that just touched the core. Um, but you did mention break even earlier. I just have to say my favorite line in that song, because this also touches the horse, is <laughs> <laughs> it's that bridge where he's like, oh, you got his heart and my heart and none of the pain. You took the, your suitcase. I took the blame. Bitch! <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I, I was like, I, I, I don't know how old I was when that song came out. I feel like I know I was like in middle school or high school, but I felt that shit, and I don't know why. I don't know why. Oh lord, I was too much of an adult at such a young age to connect to that that line. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's but, the way it goes, though, because when people express yourself, they express yourself. Then when people break up, the shit, you know, so usually at least one, everybody feels cheated or like the shit didn't go their way. Mm -hmm. I associate that song with Lakewood because I felt married to that church. I dedicated mm -hmm. my heart and soul. And that was my spiritual immaturity because I should have dedicated more myself to God and not to Joe Lostein. Mm -hmm. You know, more I should have dedicated myself more to God and not to Lakewood Church. I think I fell into a state of idolizing him and what Lakewood is supposed to be. And this is why I don't mind preaching this message, you know, pun intended, because a lot of people are in these churches thinking they're going there for Jesus and really they're going there for the personalities. Mm -hmm. like, so, like, so I saw Tyler Perry's ignorant ass, you know, on Instagram preaching at Lakewood Church the other, you know, the other week. And this is why I'm done with him. Two reasons. I tried to reach out you know, to him, I wanted to find him, send him my book and everything like that. Well, he don't take mail from people. Oh, no. You know, I got a whole, I called um, over there to Atlanta and his gatekeepers were like, no. So I'm like, so you done come a long way from hoping people go to see your Medea plays to being so high and mighty. You don't want to hear from your fans. Okay. And so I sent the shit anyway. 
And so um, then I see him on Lakewood preaching. I was like, okay, when the fuck did he become a preacher? As maybe he is. But um, but the thing that pissed me off is what he was preaching about. And he was saying that same thing that I've heard in so many churches about, you know, you're getting ready to go to a new level and that friend of yours is not going to be able to come. You know, you have to leave them behind and move forward and everybody's clapping and stuff like that. I, which is clearly what he's done, which is why he doesn't want to take mail from people anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't think it is a good thing to rejoice over leaving somebody who used to be your friend behind. The Holiloquy podcast focuses on the variability of sexual expression. When it comes to sexual expression, we often depend on pornography to illustrate how one must perform sexually. For those who have not learned this by now, the stuff you see in porn is not real. Pornography provides a singular perspective of sexual expression that is not often the reality we see during our own sexual encounters. The Holiloquy Podcast is a conversation that takes you outside of the compressed box of what many know about sex. Some of the topics we discuss include kinks, condom usage, status disclosure, and past sexual experiences. The Holiloquy Podcast steps out on sexual norms and recognizes that the norm is not the only normal. Subscribe today and join the conversation. people anymore mm -hmm. i don't think it is a good thing to rejoice over leaving somebody who used to be your friend behind Ooh. and you know and these people and these people don't say if it's an enemy or if they hurt you they're just saying like if you think that they're too basic and they're gonna hurt your destiny then poof be gone and i'm like no bitch that's not what jesus said do it all Tyler, mm. 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 <laughs> you see I i'm not gonna say the um the Tyler Shade is not a fan of this damn show because look, the Tyler Shade comes whenever the Tyler Shade comes. And look, I, I look, I did not do this on purpose. I did not know this man was going to be talking about Tyler Perry. There's a whole episode literally dedicated to like almost that entire episode. We were throwing shade on Tyler Perry. And I think it's more than one episode this season. But um it's not on purpose, y'all. The man just is he needs to do better. And uh low key. When I was in college, uh, and for one of my first plays, uh, it was the Color Museum, and there was a Black female director, all-Black crew. Uh, I think there was one white person. I might be mistaken, but, you know, backstage crew, all mixed, like, diversity back there. But, um, you know, it's a Black play, and uh, she literally reached out to Tyler Perry and everything and invited him to the show, sent him some tickets and all these other things so that he can actually come see... Um, the Mercer players actually do uh do this performance because it's rare that you will see that happening on an all white well a predominantly white college campus. Not a peep was heard, but that perform oh my performance of Miss Raj Miss Raj was so fucking good. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Now, you know that that bitch has that bitch has nigga could have sent damn you know a representative a proxy or something. You know, even if he couldn't make it a love letter or a note, a fucking donation. But, and y'all, I don't say, I don't use the N-word even in passing very often. If I'm saying nigga, that means somebody that made me <laughs> go back to 1985, living in the hood on 48th Street with crack houses everywhere, which is why I do come from the hood. You know, you didn't brought the hood up out of me, me to call you motherfucking bitch ass nigga. Look, <laughs> I don't talk like that. that took you back to the roots oh my god i'm here for it i am here for it but i i i do agree that um most definitely when it comes to those that preaching that you really should not be just leaving your friends like like if these people have not wronged you you see that your friend is struggling they have never turned their back on you they have always been there in your corner and you see that your come up is right there right next door and you do get your little come up i'm not going to leave my friend I will help my friend if I can, if I have the resources to do so. I will still be my friend and contact them, see how they're doing, coach them if I need to. Whatever I can do to make to secure the uh, safety of my friend that I've known for some time, even if it's only been like a year. But just to leave somebody behind because your blessing is right there, is that arm's reach and you just need to let these people go who have not done anything hurtful to you. What? Who oh, got... And this is what's but what that happens. Does, mm -hmm. What that does is it reinforces the narcissism that mm -hmm. prevails in Christians. 
they sat there in those pews thinking they're better than everybody and higher and mighty than everybody. They, they're stroking their congregants' ego. They already got them high off the laser lights and the worship music and tell them how fucking awesome they are. You take their money and then the preachers will go and get rich. And meanwhile, they've sold their dumbass congregation on a pipe dream. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all a mind fuck. But um, there's so much I can do with that. But going back to the song, you know, Break Even, you know, in, in the, one of the lyrics in there, he talks about how this, this, this the, the, he, he says, her best years have been some of my worst. Mm-hmm. You know, when I, when these churches kick people out, they keep on writing books, selling out arenas, writing music, making millions and millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. While Lakewood Church was still writing more books, writing more music, and getting richer and richer and richer, I was homeless on the streets of Houston, mm-hmm. you know, shitting wherever I could, sleeping in the backs of cars after the trauma that that kick out caused me. So my life got worse and worse and worse while they got richer and richer and richer. And that's why that, that line resonates with me mm, mm. yeah that's powerful like and to think this is a church that you know in most churches let's put it that way the preaching is that we'll help our fellow man we'll uh, extend a helping hand but yet you do these things to your own constituents yet you will turn your back on them just because their sexuality is a little bit different just because they look a little bit different, just because they have a different background than you, because they have a different faith than you, we have to not accept you and bring you along with us. Just because you do not, because I'm bringing it back full circle, people, just because you do not identify in a way that we say that you need to be, because you don't have this, um, what we say are called the traditional man role or the traditional woman role that we cannot support you. We cannot educate ourselves on anything that exists outside of what we made as a dichotomy because that is of sin, that is of the devil, that is not what we are about. That doesn't fit our belief system. Therefore, you do not exist. Therefore, you are uh, demonic and you are just evil. It's ridiculous. But, you know, that reinforces, that tells people what they want to hear. Because anybody sitting in the church is going to hear, well, they ain't talking about me. You know, mm-hmm. I'm in here in these people, so I'm good. And people don't go to church, Vernon, to help the world. People go to church to help themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they're like, oh, I'm here, I'm going to bur- boin up in Hades. So I got to go to church to get my soul right. I got to go here to do this. So I'll be good in eternity. And so I'll get blessings. Bitches don't go to church for you. They go to church for them. Mm, that's a good perspective i didn't even think about that but you're right i don't that's even when it comes to like whenever you see the uh, missionary work is i'm doing this to save your soul because me saving your soul saves my soul it's a lot of Mm self-interest in a lot of these actions i i haven't really been thinking about that but I, i see it i see it wow that's why I don't go to church. I'm a huge fan of the Trinity, God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost, but they exist apart from religion. Mm-hmm. And so my mission in life is to make people aware that you can have a great relationship with God and you never have to step foot in the fucking church. Mm. I was at my boyfriend's, boyfriend's house the other day cleaning some shit out. Um, and one of his neighbors came out, you know, interested in some of the furniture that I was getting rid of. And he got into this testimony of his and he was um, sick. He had something come. This young man, fine as hell, too. Uh, you know, you know, looked like he may be in his 20s or some shit. He had a stomach thing. Some polyps or some shit showed up and the doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. He was an atheist. OK. And, uh, and he was basically going to die, you know, and that was it. They just basically sent him home to die. And he fasted for t- the whole day, I guess the whole 24 hours that he prayed as sincere a prayer as he could. He was like, God, look, I'm not ready to die, man. You know, please help me. And that night he shit out a whole toilet bowl full of blood. And that was the Lord flushing that infection out of him. And he ain't had a problem since. And that turned him into a believer. He don't go to church. But God came and met him in his house and he was like, you gave me this miracle. So let me get into this Bible on my own mm-hmm. and study. I don't need a church, but you, you, you met me where I was. So I know you real, but fuck mm. the church <laughs> epicenter. That is the epicenter of my ministry. Praise Jesus. Fuck the church. 
Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh, I, a child something just robbed in somebody's house. Oh my God. <laughs> Again, I've been pointing out pews lately in the, uh, on the show. I think that person who needed that word, they are stuck in um, pew number six. Actually, I think it's that entire row. It's that entire row. They all felt that one. Go ahead and get up. Get up before they start passing that collection plate out, bitch. You know you don't got that money. You got rent to pay. You about to put in that twenty dollar bill, bitch. What what the fuck is wrong with you? Go to McDonald's if you're gonna be wasting some damn twenty dollars. The fuck? Okay, I'm sorry. Or at least go to the riverboat. At least go to the riverboat casino. Where you might have a chance to, to get some of your damn money back. Churches are just like casinos, bruh. You go there and they are guaranteed to make money. A church and a casino the same way. And yet they kind of dangle a carrot saying you might. <laughs> <laughs> Who's guaranteed to win is the house. The house always wins with churches and casinos. Uh, church bills pay uh, out the hell. Uh, the pastor got all the finest clothes, got a whole private jet. But most Rory. of the constituents cannot even get to college with the full ride scholarship. Mm. Um, food stamps and every damn thing. There's an Instagram page called Preachers in Sneakers. And this guy wrote a book too. Um, and he tracks all the expensive shit pastors get. He'd be, he be calling them out. $20,000 jackets, $15,000 this, $1,500 shoes and shit. Preachers just the letter in sneakers. And he, it is the some of, some of those epic shade and I- <laughs> oh my lord well look we're revisiting pew six uh i see that y'all haven't left yet so you might as well go ahead and go to that instagram see if your past is on there <laughs> and if not, you might need to uh, find out where your money's been going all these years most definitely your grandmama your i know your granddaddy ain't going to church if you if you are african-american just uh uh, the center of Africans in the U.S. I already know your granddaddy was not at church. So your grandmama spent all that money. <laughs> Get your money back from pastor. Uh, anyways, gender. So one of the things that I do want to talk about is how gender is fluid. Um, well, that was part of the conversation uh, that we did lean into uh, when we were drafting up everything. So uh, for yourself, uh, what does that fluidity mean to you? In the beginning, there was God, and I'm not someone. I don't. Believe, I don't think the Big Bang theory and the Genesis creation story are mutually exclusive. I think. Mm. I think that it was both. I think God spoke. We had us Big Bang because the days, the seven days that God created the earth are not literal seven days. There's a lot of time in between that. So I don't see why we can't have them all. And nevertheless, when he got ready to make people, he was like male and female, masculine and feminine. I make them and he made them in his own image. And so God is both male and female. There's female and male angels. Um, There's, you know, many movies portray angels as non-binary. You know, there's this understanding that you have both. So when it comes down to gender fluidity, some there's a spectrum. Some of us are more on the masculine spectrum. Some of us are more on the feminine spectrum. Some of us in between. I think this is all of God. Mm. And it's just as simple as that. It is, it is a reflection of true and pure spirituality. That is all. Oh, I, f- I feel you on that. Because like, even whenever I think of like, because I always think of the divine masculine and feminine energies. And within that, there's always balance. And it's like there's no disconnect between those two. It is still a spectrum. You either fall somewhere within the masculine side of things. And sometimes you have to fluctuate yourself within the feminine uh, side of things. If it's uh, you need a change in perspective or something like that, you just find your way within that. And whenever you are like centering yourself, whenever you're trying to focus on like, I guess, manifesting something else, you have to find that balance within those two energies. And that's how we mostly maneuver through our lives. And when it comes to gender expression, that's when I guess we all have like all this animosity that we got going on in this damn country and also other places uh, around the globe too where we just want to put everything in a box in this binary um like look of things and it's like when you look at the history that like the clothing people wear uh well what they wore back in the day um 
versus what we're doing today. I'm like, motherfuckers have been wearing dresses all this time. And now we got an issue with men wearing dresses. Why? We have issues with uh, masculine presenting people wearing um, skirts. Why? Well, unless, unless it's a cultural skirt, uh, like a kilt or something of that nature. But we have all these issues with uh, someone wanting to uh, wear androgynous attire or wear something that we believe only women should do. Um, where it's like, it's ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. Let people do whatever the fuck they want to do with their bodies. Mm-hmm. So this goes back to the hypocrisy of the church because the main people are going to be bitching about that are going to be like your Republicans, your conservatives. And then they're the ones who are trying to talk about this is a Christian nation. It's not a fucking Christian nation. There's no national religion. Everybody does what the fuck they want to do in these United States. I say all that because Christianity is a Middle Eastern religion in the first fucking place. Not much really originates in the fucking United States except for a goddamn hot dog or some shit. This is a bland ass country in and of itself. <laughs> you think of it, you know, this shit ain't, you know. And so, and the concept, you know, in the Middle East, you know, when I was over there a couple of months ago, we still, people walk around in what would be considered a skirt. People don't necessarily wear pants there. Everybody got on a gown of some sort, mm-hmm. you know, twirling around. It is not a masculine or feminine thing. It is a cultural thing. Mm. And so the culture and the fashion culture has changed, but the people who want to bitch about androgyny or masculine and feminine are people who tout their Christian beliefs, but and the, but they want to say the culture has changed. They used to wear skirts back then, but that's not what we're doing now. But then if you want to talk about something that frees us, um, or if that frees them, say how Jesus said not to get divorced for any reason other than infidelity, you know, Mm-hmm. And straight people get divorced left and right for reasons other than infidelity. Mm-hmm. Then they don't want to talk about, well, let's, you know, let's do it like the Hebrews did it. You know, it depends on what serves them. You know, then it then it changes how they want to interpret scripture and how they want to say this is cultural. This could change or we still going to do that. It, they they shift it back and forth because they're just fucking full of themselves. Mm, I agree. It's like I I would never understand being so involved in other people's lives that I just cannot live my own. Like, I even remember having a conversation with somebody and uh, they brought, they asked me if I was like a film boy. I was like, no, like if, if I were, would you have a problem with that? And it was like, oh no, I do. I love film boys, blah, 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 blah. As long as you don't think that you are a, a woman, because I don't fuck around with that. And I'm like, oh, I one I can't just fuck with I just can't fuck with you two um so you're saying you're you're going to disrespect like trans women but you are going to accept feminine men because they still identify as men just on the feminine side what like why can't you just accept that trans women exist like it's okay for them to be here like it's nothing that they think that they're this they know that they're this they uh have their own identity like you don't know their experience you don't know their life so fuck off like (laughs) and then have the nerve to say well you don't know what the fuck you're talking about and then i was like but fam i do this for a living (laughs) i i know way more about this than you think you know and then even had the nerve to say that i went to school for nothing and i only know things about that's like lies that's given to me by white folks blah 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 blah. but i was like fam you don't even know what's going what's happening uh africa in in centuries before colonialism hit so clearly i don't know why you're talking to me (laughs) like people are weird people are fucking weird and i don't think this is somebody who was like on the republican side like in terms of politics but just a conservative mindset just oh my god and not very mentally balanced the only time that it's okay to like say have a not even have a problem like if you're talking about who you would be intimate with then by all means you know you have a right to be like i want a femme boy and not a trans girl because that's your dick you can stick it where you want but it shouldn't be of a such that like i have a problem with them because they exist so i don't know if the nature of your conversation was a potential y'all gonna fuck talk or if it was like a meeting of the minds and if there was no potential intimacy so i don't know what the dynamic was between y'all 
Child, this was a uh, random as they hit me up out of nowhere situation. <laughs> and like, we don't even, but there's what, no though? real history. Oh, to attempt to go to, uh, to have sex. And mind you, this person lived in like Philadelphia. And I'm like, I'm not pulling up on you. Like, I don't, like, I don't mind having conversations with people. Most definitely if like, um, they are states away. Like, look, I love conversation. Look, I have, we have podcasts for that reason. But like, on top of that, who knows if I ever decide to make a trip, I, I probably will not be making any kind of trips to uh, Philadelphia uh, at all, unless my old neighbor is still there and looking for me, then I'll just be like, what's up? Let's see what the adult <laughs> looks like. <laughs> but anyways, outside of that. But yeah, it's like complete strangers. And I'm like, you didn't have to go this route in this. Like, have your preferences, but don't be disrespectful with it. You don't dismiss the identity of somebody just because you don't understand it. And I even mentioned that. I was like, look, it's cool if you don't understand um the trans person's experience but just don't act like they do not exist they're human beings and that was even too much oh well fuck him in the ass with no lube oh my god what is with you can he just gargle a bag of dicks or some shit (laughs) (laughs) oh Oh look! You these, say, I, these, uh, these boys have been trying. They tried to get me to go to the bathhouse because these tops, you know, when I used to be more of a hoe, would would compliment me on my ability to take dick. Now I don't go around fucking asses, so I don't have their frame of reference, I, you I know. But you. it it, it, it happened so much. They're like, like, damn, you need to come down here, you know, so I can, you know, so they can like, I guess, run a train or whatever. Because I guess there's a lot of bottoms out there pretending you can't really take getting stabbed in the ass or some shit. You know, well, this bitch can. What? Are they are they using lube? Like, are are they bringing the lube to the bathhouses? Because I'm like, when you when I think about it, I'm just like, you cannot use water as lube. That's drying the motherfucker out. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> like... I don't I don't frequent bathhouses, but the few times I have been, they usually have lube like at the counter and shit. You okay. know, lube and condom. Okay, then. But everybody shows up with their fuck bag anyway. So, <laughs> as you should, as you should look, <laughs> walk around with your damn hoe bags. That's all I'm saying. Like, you need you need a good hoe bag. Like, I just recently learned that I probably might need to upgrade to uh, a duffel bag. But um, I'm going to stick with my current little tote because it's very comfortable and it's not a lot to carry around. And I'm good. Like, but oh my god. So, will you be going to the bathhouse anytime soon? Like within the next year, since you since you keep getting the invites. No, because I um the only bathhouse I've ever been in that I was comfortable in is when I was one in Tokyo, mm-hmm. like several years ago. For whatever fucking reason, I was just like drunk walking around Japan and just stumbled across a fucking like nine story gay bathhouse, and I was like, okay, there's three in the morning. I guess I'll go in, and so, <laughs> but. But here in the United States, nah, you know, I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm happy with, you know, with my partner and everything like that. If, if our relationship grows to a point where we're comfortable enough to go to a bathhouse together, mm-hmm. then that'd be it. I'm not about to go in there and let my ass be used because my asshole is too tight and I can't be giving it out for free. Oh, amen to that. Amen to that. Mm, amen. Wait, so the bathhouses in, um, the one that you went to Tokyo. So were they fucking in that? Because I always just thought like, because I I just thought it was just like the actual bathhouses and like when you go to J- Japan, nothing like sexual going oh, okay. on. It's just, we're going in here, we're bathing because it's like a community bath. What you're talking about is what's called an onsen over in, over in Japan. That is an onsen. So when you go in there, you have like the little five-year-old boys there with their grandpappies who look about 120 years old because Japanese people just don't fucking die. And, um, you know, then it's kind of like a familial thing. You know, each generation of male is there with a dick swinging, you know. So, yeah, so that's during the daytime. You go in, you have the female side, the male side. Sure, you do have that. But when I say bathhouse, I mean fucking in the ass, orgy, sex everywhere, gay bathhouse. You say <laughs> it was no nine sex? stories? This shit was huge, but you guys, you got a lot of fucking people in Tokyo. That's a huge true, ass city. True. You can't build no little shack. <laughs> you got to have space. And I just was like, it was so damn many people. 
And it was just so, but you know, they really love black people over in Japan. They can't fucking yeah. stand white people, but they love black people. It just made me very comfortable. So I didn't have to deal with the racist shit you get from like the racist gays here mm -hmm. in the United States, the racist white gays. You know, I'm black. I'm the commodity over there. They don't get this very often. So, I mean, I had my run of the mill. <laughs> See, I heard, I've been hearing that uh, it's very black friendly in Japan. Granted, there are some times a little bit of racial tensions most definitely when it comes to hiring and whatnot but i've heard that it's still a very safe place for black people to visit but i did not know about the fact that they hate white people that means i need to visit there a little more not saying that i hate white people but the white peoples are annoying as fuck <laughs> like, i would like to go somewhere and feel secure it's, it's so um that's on the, that's i've always wanted to go to japan anyways but that's even more of a reason to go and then if i can also tack on being a huge hoe on that too ah, uh, we shall see if i'm like in a whole ass relationship by the time i actually go there won't be any hoeing but the the thought process would be there like we're here what's up <laughs> well, I'll be there. Well, I'll be there. I'll be there in the middle of the year. Uh, if you want to tag along, let me know. Come through. I'll be there like a month. What? Okay. We. Well, okay. What? What months? What month are you going to be there? Oh my god! I can't say that on the air. But you oh can, yeah, you're you right. Know, you're right. Yes. We get off the air. You know, I don't yes. tell people when I'm out of town. You oh, you're around, right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Because <laughs> motherfuckers be trying to pull up. Mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> Only time I say I'm out of town is the same day I'm on my way back. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't tell a bitch till I'm back in my house. Like, this is where I've been. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know what I left. Who I left at my house or nothing. Mm -hmm. A python could be waiting on your ass if you come through my door. Look, some, somebody was asking way too many questions not too long ago because uh, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to be heading out of town. They were like, oh, okay, cool. That's great. And this is somebody who's uh, um, who was interested in meeting up, but we haven't really met up yet. And it was like, oh, so how long you going to be out of town? Uh, all this other stuff. like, uh, And they also was asking, like, who else do I live with? I was like, well, you know, when I go out of town, my uncle usually just stops in and, you know, check on my house. Like, why are you asking me all these damn questions about what I, what's going on with me leaving? It's not that. They can rob your ass. Like, they trying to get your ass. Look, there's motherfuckers who know my apartment. <laughs> I have family members with keys. Like, you don't want to don't pull up don't pull up i don't i don't need to see you uh, <laughs> but another thing this is also going on um uh, gender uh i will say one of the things i really did appreciate um because i am such a huge anime lover uh is that they do make somewhat of a space for um gender dynamics and understanding different people their backgrounds um and just like either be, be it that they're queer or just understanding that they may be some other third gender or un unknown entity like Orochimaru in um, Naruto. Everybody's like, okay, is that a man or woman or what the fuck is going on here? You know, you have these different characters built in within the anime that um, makes you think a little bit more about how people express themselves when it comes to their gender like even when it comes to to boruto they don't ever call orochimaru like a man woman or anything like that it's just um my parent they call orochimaru by by their name all of that so i think that's one of the things i do like so much about japanese culture now doesn't mean that was always on point with it no because i've seen some very topic uh toxic uh, depictions of queer people but i also seen some phenomenal ones too so like i do like that about um you know japanese culture and how they approach gender they approach sex very nicely like there's sections of tokyo where you know a lot of sexy you know things are sold mm -hmm. and things like that then people are not shy you know about sex at all it is very talked about Mm -hmm. you know things like that so that's why you have like the hentai gay you know gay anime with these huge gigantic dicks squirting waterfalls of cum you know and everything <laughs> like that the japanese are definitely about that life and you they would be are. comfortable there's not any white people in advertisements and shit 
when you go there, it is rare to find Whitey on the wall anywhere. They have all the ethnic people represented. They still remember what white people did to them dropping bombs and all that bullshit. They're mm -hmm. not happy about that. As they should be. <laughs> As they should As not they be. <laughs> 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 now, um, uh, I will say, because I've I, one of the other reasons why I really do want to visit Japan is I need I want to find someone who's like a sex educator or a sex researcher and just have conversations with them and just to understand the culture um, itself when it like how sexuality is handled because I've been reading some things about how their um their age of consent I guess is it's like 13 but um I like for me I don't think that's like for like pedophile reasons I think it's one of those oh this is the age when we start having these conversations about sexuality because when I look at Japanese culture I see like people embracing their sexuality i don't see people repressing it as much so i think that's part of the reason is because they start having these pertinent conversations with people at a lot of a younger age but again this is another reason why i want to talk to somebody who's there uh who's lived uh through you know the experiences of being in that culture for a long period of time, just so that they can educate me on like why these policies exist and the histories of those, because I don't like whenever people approach other cultures from their perspective and um, just dismiss the culture themselves. So that's part of the reason why I really want to have the conversation in Japan with somebody who focuses on that. So it's just, just thank you. If you but take a few classes of Japanese down to the community college so you can speak a little Japanese when you get there. It's not required. Mm -hmm. they, speak, they speak plenty of English in Tokyo, especially in, in Tokyo Central. But if you're trying to get that deep with it, they would respect you more if you could at least say a little bit more than arigato or konnichiwa. <laughs> okay, let me do better. Let me do better. So hopefully I'll be able to like host an event in Japan one day. Oof. Ooh, child. Goals, new goals. That's going to be my goal for 2025. Host an event in Japan. Anyways, back to gender. Now, I will, um, um, I love your boutique. Uh, your store, it sells phenomenal lingerie. Uh, and you also include plus size uh, lingerie art, uh, like uh, pieces as well which not too many places do so um what 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 is your inspiration when it comes to um selecting some of the products that you uh, do select most definitely when it uh, pertains to certain genders um uh, like what what's your your process like shit represent every fucking body <laughs> period you know there's lingerie on there that's lace lingerie that's designed like feminine but made for the cut of a man's body so that they don't have to cross dress any female's clothes unless they choose to but they want something that's made for a male's body then they can ha have that um you know so i know we're working on adding a more like say quote unquote lesbian friendly underwear because like a lot of lesbians want it like more boyish shorts and stuff mm -hmm. like that so she kind of feel like she's hanging loose in her boxers like a dude you know and i'm all here for that you know so you know, everybody, everybody, period. Yes, and I think I think that's where a lot of places lack because I look at some of the other places that you will, I will, you know, like prominent making buku bucks, and I'm just like, but you can constantly leave out so many different communities. You leave out most well, of plus size people. Like, there's not anywhere that I could find outside of yours, um, your lingerie section, uh, probably a little bit on Shine, Shein, I don't know how to pronounce the word, honestly, probably something on there that I could find something that may fit me, but that's not across the board. It's like, we'll stop at like 2X maybe, actually usually stops at XL. And it's like, but big people are sexy too. I shouldn't have to go to the women's section to find something for me because sometimes those things just don't fit the look that I'm trying to like give for myself. So why, mm. like, why prevent big people from feeling sexy too? Why prevent those individuals like um, who may be on the trans spectrum? Uh, why prevent them from feeling sexy in the marketing? 
that you have uh, for your products. Like everyone has sexiness within them. Just let it shine. Mm -hmm. You know, and there, there, I mean, there's such a huge market for plus size, but more importantly, like you're saying, it makes people feel included. Self-esteem gets raised that when somebody in any size can come online and find something for them because then they go, hey, I wasn't left out. I was included. Mm. I'm heard. I'm seen. I'm valued. Me being a sexual being is validated, you know, because this store bothered to design something to fit me. And then we're not shaming you for being plus size or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, there's a, there's an attraction for everything. And I learned, learned this lesson the hard way back when I was, you know, skinnier and everything. There was this fine ass dude. I mean, fine that I was talking to online and he was down to fuck, but he had a minimum weight that he required people to be because he only fucked with, you know, the bigger guys, period, <laughs> period. And so, so you had to be at least, you know, a certain amount of hundred pounds or you wouldn't even trying to holler. And he had like a mm -hmm. six pack and shit like that. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's more, you know, you know, it's about that. One of the things I love most about the relationship I have now, you know, I've struggled with weight, especially, especially since, I, since I've been off the crystal meth, honey, it's hard to keep his weight off. And so, you know, so my <laughs> weight, I've been up to like 250 pounds. I'm down to like 210, 212 now. I'm trying to get back to like 175, 185. I think that'll be a good medium for me. But, you know, I was, I really didn't love my, myself being overweight, you know, but my boyfriend is like super slender, you know, track runner type, and he loves all body types. And that helps me to feel better about myself. And so somebody showing somebody else love, uh, no matter what their body type is, can win them over and, and help them to learn to love themselves. Should not, your, your self-confidence can't hinge on that person, but it can mm. give you that nudge to start to believe in yourself. And mm. that's what I try to do through my story. Yes, and I love it. I love it because, look, if y'all haven't um, visited his store, of course, everything is going to be in the show notes. Um, so definitely look into that. Um, but yeah, it's even the models that you choose are individuals who are plus size, that are wearing the material. And that's a good thing to see because it's like, um, as someone who's been like a big dude, well, I can't say technically a big dude in high school. I was just large. I was just, you know, bigger bodied, um, but I wasn't like big, big. Uh, but as someone who uh, felt and um, felt as though I was like huge most of my life, it was like I found my self-confidence for myself, my own self-love. But uh, I did not enjoy seeing myself represented as something that can still be sexy and whenever I do look at things that's on your store I do see myself as still looking at somebody who can't be sexy regardless and of course these days it doesn't matter what anybody else says because this nigga over here is fun but um <laughs> yes, you are. Like, <laughs> like so it's like um uh, for like a younger version of myself that would have been something that would i would have definitely appreciated so much just to see oh look it's a big dude like me that's rocking this uh outfit that i thought i wouldn't look good in and i see i too can put something on like that and still look good so it's it's great it's great it's validating so like I need more places to get on your level. So what I hear you saying is, and y'all, the name of the store is Down Under Apparel. So you're saying Down Under Apparel, down, down Under Apparel has become your new church, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I, I, <laughs> I'm in pew number three <laughs> at the church. <laughs> down Under Apparel Church. <laughs> right behind Pastor's husband. Oh, actually, that means I have to be in the second row because why will Pastor's husband be in the second? Okay, he needs to be in the first. So I'll be in the second row at Down Under Apparel's Church. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyways, I, <laughs> I think this will be a good time to bring out the Never Have I Evers. And I feel like whatever it is, you already did the shit. Um... <laughs> Let's see. Never have I ever teased a lover with ice cubes. Yeah. We, there's been ice play. I don't know if I did the teasing, 
but this dude brought like that sonic ice over and this Ooh. styrofoam cup on this hookup and he put that in my asshole before he ate it and then he fucked me you know that, that just sounds very that sounds like a lot of fun like i love sensations so that automatically i'm just like you know what? i could try some shit like that um but i've i've definitely played with ice before um it is fun like just to feel it melt on your body and then it warms up like over after time passes it's just like now the water is now getting to your body heat and now you're just a wet mess and you're just like enjoying it it's it's great if you're you know even if you don't have like uh um well if you're going to do it have a towel down but at the end of the day it's water um now for you wet mofos out here uh you know the women y'all squirters and shit you know you know what you got to do you could use the use the ice as your uh, water your pre-wash i guess (laughs) i don't know but yeah um have a, a water safe covering for your mattresses because mattresses are expensive as fuck so yeah i need to get some ice I also need to get somebody to fuck too, so I'll yeah. hold off. I'll hold off on that. <laughs> um, what about a would you rather? So, would you rather give a lap dance to one of your par- uh, oh, would you rather give a lap dance to one of your parents or get a lap dance from one of your parents? Ew, neither. Why where the hell did you get that question from? This is it's from the book. It is from the book. Ew. That's that, do we we're just going to act like that question did not happen. Who asked this is not that? The fellowship. This is not the fellowship of Latter Day Saints Church. Oh. We said this should be done <laughs> under a parish. We don't fuck our parents, kids, and none of that. There's a place we don't for do you. Don't do that. Not here. <laughs> I hear not in this house. I'm not here to judge. I'm just telling you, we don't, we don't, we we don't know uncle fuckers, no dad fuckers, none of that. Well, but do I, you do you <laughs> now we're here <laughs> if you are that person just answer that with your closest friends that actually understand what the fuck you've been going through because i cannot i'm sorry would you rather <laughs> actually scream the wrong name in bed no accidentally scream the wrong name in bed or hear your partner scream the wrong name in bed fuck i guess <laughs> either way because then the next question gonna be like is he gonna is he is he on the way <laughs> you can come on over then hell if you don't your mind that much so he could so the partner could scream because then i'll turn into a three-way Ooh, i fucks with that i fucks with that <laughs> um honestly depending i will be okay if it's just a random okay if it's like a committed relationship i would not feel some type of way if my partner uh, calls somebody else's name out i am going to ask questions because i'm like okay what what were you thinking about that they did that i need to like erase that memory because i don't need you to like be calling out their names next time i do that i need you to just be thinking about me so at least i could upgrade this person every single time so by the end of this you don't think think about this person or like you said they could come over like what's up are, are, are we still fucking this person? Because we can always invite them over. Like, what's up? But I feel like if I were to do it, my partner just be like, yeah, I'm not surprised because, nigga, you had a very hoish past. So um, <laughs> we need to talk about why the fuck you were thinking about that <laughs> while we're having sex. It's like, well, you know, I don't know. You just you just did something that reminded me of this person. And now look, all you have to do is just upgrade a little bit and do a little bit better than I forget this person's name. And then it's all good because that means I deleted the body off my body count. I'm going, look, I'm trying to go down to one. What you trying to do? <laughs> Make me a version tonight. <laughs> good save, girl. Good save. <laughs> Delete my body count. That's all I'm asking you to do. That's all. That's all. Is that not is that not a goal? Like <laughs> body counts are also on a spectrum. I agree. They don't There's exist. Stuff to change. <laughs> I, I, I just be like, um, if anybody ever asks me, I'm just like, just throw a number, like get a dart, uh, like dartboard, throw it at something, and whatever you land on, that's what that's my body count. Like I stop counting. If it lands on one, look at God. You know my heart. <laughs> So are you trying to be number two or? <laughs> no, 
my goals. Yeah, I stopped counting too. When I was damn near like, I don't know, a thousand different men or some shit. You know, I stopped counting. And at this point, it's too late for that. I've done what I've done. It is what it is. It is what it is. Like I love that. I don't see why mm. people be ashamed of it. Again, it's experience points. Like, level up. If you're not leveling up out here, what are you doing? Don't be that basic level five all your life. It's okay to, you like, you could level up with one person. You could level up with 18. You could level up with a thousand. But continue to level up. Don't be basic. Okay? That's that's the word. I level up here. I love up the way you play. You know, I'm not as I don't necessarily promote multiple sexual partners, as, but I like to promote variety because what I don't like, I don't judge multiple sexual partners. The whole Old Testament is full of nothing but polyamorous fucking relationships. And so I'm here for all of that. But I like variety, you know, get all them toys and kinks and shit like make it fun. May, bring some breakfast shit to the bedroom, some bacon mm. and egg and see what you can do with it you know get get interesting with it because it's sad when i see people trade sexual variety in between them and another person for a variety of people you know you only have so much time in a day so if you're trying to fuck five people a week and you have a partner then you're not gonna have as much time to experiment with that partner and some kinks you cannot get into unless you trust a person you go on grinder tonight and find somebody to fuck you dumb as hell if you let them tie you up in ropes. You know, you only can get into extreme shit like that with somebody who you know, who you have accountability to, and that person is in your network, and you know they're not going to tie you up, rob you, slice you up, you know. So you limit it until you get close enough to somebody to try the more extreme things. Exactly. Like, you can't just be out here trusting everybody, people. Granted, I will say I um, did like have a full on kidnapping role play scenario that uh, happened like uh, last month and we only knew each other for like 24 hours. But I'm the one that was orchestrate orchestrating everything. I was getting tied up. So at least that person was safe on that end. He did not choose a psychopath for, for this experience. But, you know, you can't trust everybody. Look, just I, I will have to say he got lucky that I'm not a crazy motherfucker. <laughs> maybe maybe he did his research you know did you give him like your real name and everything i did um we, we so, talked for a little bit but i like i think it was the vibes because you know i give off those healing vibes regardless so it it's the like, vibes too but, but you know you're also like a public figure you know as am i so we have a social footprint our asses are easy to track down so it's not like we're very likely to go do some shit, you know, what where where he at? Right here. Got a whole show and shit. We not about to do some shit. Look, we I the just, last people who gonna do some shit. Look, that's like what people we ask me to do public play. I'm like, no, I have a whole ass life that I'm trying to live. Like I I cannot go to jail and be listed as a damn sex offender because you want to have sex outside. Like I can't, I won't even be able to get a, a get my license, like for to be a therapist if I were to do that. Like, no, I actually enjoy the career path I'm going down. I don't care what the fuck you want to do with your damn life. Go outside, fuck as much as you want. If you don't have a backyard that we could fuck in and have the the illusion of exhibitionism, <laughs> then I don't want to. I'm not doing it. We good. Thank you. You cute, I guess. You better put, you better, you better put the, the National Geographic channel on TV and do a background and be like, exactly. oh, we in, the, we in the jungle. We in the Amazon. Look, pull up a green screen and we fucking looking at the damn camera. Are we outside? <laughs> like people are like, oh yeah, let's just go to the woods. The woods? Who you... This is not that movie. I love that movie, but I'm not. No, what's the woods? No, mm -mm, no, Lord. <laughs> I barely know you, fam. You saying going to the woods, and we're in some state that or some city that I'm not comfortable it with being in. Hashtag Atlanta. I'm not. No, we're not fucking around with those fuck arounds. <laughs> but yeah. Whew, on that note, do you have any last words that you would like to share with the audience? Just love yourselves, people. Get off of all them damn apps, off of all the fucking social media. Get your self-esteem back. 
get your self of that sense of self back because you're not gonna find it looking at other people that much and looking at other people who live, live their lives Mm, a word. Oh, we didn't say it at the beginning, but I heard that you have a new short book that's out, that's free. Yes, yeah, so you can go to my website, sexdrugsandjesus.com. That's C-O-M, not C-U-M, you nasty motherfuckers. I love oh. it. Sexdrugsandjesus.com. And the name of this book is called Don't Call Me a Christian. What does that word even mean? Mm. And it's a free book. You can download the PDF from the website or click the universal book link and put it on whatever on, on a couple of app options. And it's free. It's only like a 30 pager, like maybe 17,000 words. It's not as big as my memoir is, which is like 120,000 words. And it's my grievance against the church and my promotion of Jesus and explaining how you how those two things, in my opinion, are mutually exclusive. I don't find very much Jesus in the church anymore. Mm -hmm. And so um, and so that that's like my bitch about that. And I'm validating this anger that you have against the church. But I'm also cautioning you about taking that anger out on Jesus Christ, who has never done you anything wrong. Who, me? Oh, but I say you, <laughs> I got you. I was like, whoa, wait. I, you did. <laughs> I just don't go to the church. <laughs> I might not identify as a Christian, but I know it's not Jesus. I Christ. don't. I don't identify as a fucking Christian. Christianity is nothing more than a Christianity is nothing more than a play term for Republicans. I don't identify as a Christian. That's why I made the term don't call me a Christian. We don't need the word Jesus wasn't a fucking Christian. He wasn't. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, now, I will say, this is a, a note for future Vern, because I know your ass is, like, contemplating what the hell you're going to name this episode right now. Um, yeah, the ones that you already came up with, they were trash. Just name it Fuck the Church. That's There you go. And, you know, do what you got to do on that. But you got the, the episode title now. All right. <laughs> I just know myself. I <laughs> Look, when I sit down, like, probably next month to actually edit this i'm going to forget so on that note <laughs> thank you so much for coming up to the podcast Devannon. i definitely appreciate you so fucking much uh to the listeners out there thank you all so much for listening to the whole little Wookie podcast where we step out and speak on sexuality just in case no one else told you this today you are beautiful you are worthy of happiness and joy you are enough and then some you may not live up to the expectations of others but that is okay you are only required to walk in your own shoes May each day you live lead you towards abundance. With that said, love you all and see you next episode. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Holiloquy Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. You can subscribe to the podcast through your favorite podcasting app and find us on the web at www.holiloquy.com. That's www.h-e-a-u-x-l-i-l-o-q-u-y.com. Share the podcast with your friends and join the conversation.